Welcome to Happy Trails Hiking. On this station, you will find content about park travel as well as living a healthy lifestyle. If you are interested in those sorts of things, I would invite you to subscribe. My name is Kay and this is the Healthy Lifestyle Show. On this show, I want to offer you encouragement to live the life you love. This is Travel Tuesday and my special guest for you today is me. Oh, I get to talk to you about one of my favorite things today. It's our national park travel. So um, our show to you today is brought to you by our photography store. And you can find all of our park photography at happytrailshiking.com slash store. You can get those items on uh, those pictures like that, collages and such, um, for wall decorations or throw pillows, mugs, lots of various and sundry things, and we appreciate your support in that way. Oh, great room today, everybody. So um, good morning to Floral Jungle, as well as Life on the Trail, Lori Bryant, Justin and Christina's RV Van Life, Marty's Career Family Adventures, Desmond's Donders, Within Hiking Distance, Spirit Forest, it is good to see all of you today. Thank you all for being here today. Um, Jorin Jaderberg just uh, happened in the room as well. So thank you all for being here. Um, have you ever planned national park travel here in the U.S.? Because that's what I'm familiar with, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so many, many people have been traveling to our national parks in the last few years, and um, the power of social media has made it much more, well, seem, seemingly attainable. Uh, and people have been going and uh, maybe they don't know how to go to a national park. Maybe they hear the word park and they think Disneyland or, you know, amusement park or, um, you know, a, a park. I don't know, something where you just go and play with everything that's in there. Um, so the National Park Service started putting out information uh, about how to travel to national parks. And I have a few tips for you, too, that I've learned along the way of our 14 plus years of traveling to national parks. Um, and I, I know you probably can't read it, but uh, a venture... Adventure is Calling, and this is a National Park shirt, and it lists all the 61, 62 national parks in the U.S., and it was a gift to me uh, from Panic D Paranormal History. So thank you, uh, Sean and Marianne, for that. Well, good morning, Susan's Creative. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, Desmond Stonder says they, that he wished they had the same system of national parks over where he is, so that's Yes, and uh, within hiking distance certainly has planned travel to national parks in the past. And uh, there they actually have a live show this afternoon at 2.30 PST about one of my favorite national parks, Death Valley. So I hope you all can join us for that one. Um, so the first tip I have for you is to plan. Plan your trip. You can't just, you know, get there and think that everything's just going to be obvious on what you're going to do. I want you to know what you want to see before you get there. Um, some of these national parks are huge. Um, if I'd have gone into Death Valley National Park and said, I want to see Eureka Dunes, the largest sand dunes, the tallest sand dunes in California and the lower 48 states. I want to see those. I'm going to allow, oh, it's only, you know, it's it's 90 miles from where I was. I'm going to get there an hour and a half. Okay, so 90 miles, yeah, not an hour and a half. We'll probably climb around the dunes for, oh, an hour or so. I'm going to plan four hours. There's no way. There's no way that I would have gotten that done. Um, And so, yeah, uh, plan. Know what's, what you want to see and how far it is and, and what it's going to take to get there. The National Park Service has fantastic, fantastic um, websites to let you look up 
where things are, and they even plan out day trips. Okay, if you have one day, here are some things that you might want to see in the park, and there's pictures of them. Wow, you know, so if you have one day, here's a good thing to do. If you're interested in, um, in hiking, here's some trails, and here's how long they are, and here's a map that tells you how far it's going to take you to get from one place to the other. So check those websites. Don't, I mean, yes, please check with your travel bloggers and vloggers that have been there before. Go see those, those videos and those blogs and go, yeah, it, here was their experience. But the National Park has put together good recommendations for you. So plan, take a look and see what is there before you go. Um, and uh, let's see. Floral Jungle says, social media has made us more aware of what is out there for us to explore. You are correct. And that's that's really, really cool. And I'm really happy that people want to explore our outdoor spaces. Um, so uh, I, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning to our special guest. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here with you all today. Um, and Let's see, cool shirt, and it is a nice gift from Panic D. Thank you. I was I was very surprised. My birthday, Marianne says, I got you a birthday present. I was like, you're not supposed to do that. Anyway, um, Desmond says, in the UK, making something a national park seems to be a way of stopping folk from accessing. Ah, oh, that's, that's very sad. And Floral Jungle is agreeing with that. I've got way behind, way behind. Um, Unless you're traveling with Rachel Rawson, then you also need to allow time for squirrels that distract you from the plan. Well, that was the other thing I was going to share. And good morning, Jelly Duck. It's good to see you. Um, I, that was the next thing I was going to share was remember that you're traveling in a national park. It's known. It was made a national park for a reason. Lots of times it's made national park for its vistas and the wildlife that they protect. So those squirrels are pretty important, you know? Um, so th those are things like I stopped to look at squirrels in on the uh, north rim of the Grand Canyon because they have the Kaibab squirrel. It's the only place that you can find it in the world. I looked for Kaibab squirrels forever and I, found, I finally found them, but it made us stop, you know? Um, so good morning to all budget bushcraft RV and van life, uh, or RV life, excuse me, not van life. That's Justin and Christina. Um, as well as what did I see pop in? Oh, outdoor nomad. Good morning, Steve. It's good to see you dropped a nice video about a national park this morning. Um, so remember that you are not traveling on state highways most of the time most of the time when you're driving in national parks. Um, even though it's 35 miles from Canyon Village in Yellowstone, the west side, over to, not the east side, over to the west side um, to go see Old Faithful, do not leave. You know, it's going to take you over an hour to get there. Number one, because, well, the roads are 35 miles an hour, tops most of the time. And then there's probably going to be people in your way. The parking lot's going to be full. You're going to have to find a place to park before you can go in and get your dinner reservations or before you're going to go see Old Faithful. So just remember that things take so much longer, so much longer in national parks. And you're, you're not going to make your dinner reservations that you made you know, if you're leaving an hour out, it just isn't, it's just not going to happen. Um, so that's, that's my big tip about like inside the national park traveling. If you're going to plan something now going to Redwood National and State Park. Yes, you're on an interstate highway, but do you know how many elk cross that? Not interstate highway. You're on a state highway. Um, you know how many elk cross that state highway? <laughs> How many times you're going to have to stop because somebody saw a elk alongside of the road and they want to stop and take a picture or whatever. There's just some beautiful, beautiful things. Um, and Susan's creative says, oh, those other people in my way, they just don't, don't they know I'm trying to visit this place? Right, 
Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I understand. I, I think that um, we just, as a tourist, I have to remember that I'm the place that I'm visiting is all around me instead of just going, I've got to get to Grand Prismatic Hot Spring or I've got to get to Brandywine Falls. There's things that we might want to stop and see along the way. So, yes. Um, and uh, Life on the Trail says, yep, a day in Yellowstone is a road trip all in itself. And even the just the north half or the south half, I don't know how many of you know, but Yellowstone is a figure eight. So they've got a bazillion things to see on the north half and a bazillion things to see on the south half. And you just, you can't do it all in one day. You just can't. Um, so my next tip for you is um, midday naps are great for vacations. Listen to that one again, especially if you're Sean from Panic D Paranormal History. Midday naps are great for vacations, especially in national parks. Go early or go late. If you want to see Old Faithful go off all by yourself, the only time you're going to get to do that is about 6.30 in the morning or after it's gotten dark. And seeing Old Faithful erupt after dark is amazing and quiet. And seeing it at 6.30 in the morning, and I have a couple videos that this footage is in, but it is just just amazing. Um, so get up early and then see the things that you want to see. The parking lots in Yellowstone were absolutely full at 10 a.m. Um, we were getting off of the trail at 10 a.m. to go in and eat early lunch and then go take a nap so that by the time it was time to go eat dinner, we were getting back out on the trail because everybody was taking everybody was taking the middle of the day and going and seeing things. So napping is good while you're traveling. Um, so yes, I, it's uh, and then get out and go and see your next thing that you wanted to go see. Good instance. Last year on our Rockies road trip, we were um, we were trying to go see Artist Paint Pots. Very popular location. It's right in the middle of Yellowstone. So it's right in the middle of the figure eight. Down this way and right here. So it's like right here when the, when the figure eight goes, uh, meets there. And it um, it's just really, we tried to go on a Sunday afternoon. Was it sun Saturday or Sunday afternoon? It was awful. We couldn't even get in the parking lot. We turned around and we went to a different spot. It was just so much easier. And then the next day we went and ate dinner first. And then we went uh, to Artist Paper. We, there were four cars total in the parking lot. When we got there, we had sunset at Artist Paint Pots all to ourselves. It was amazing. It was amazing. So my tip is to take a nap in the middle of the day. And then get up and spend time in the evening going out and seeing those things that you wanted to see. Eat a late dinner. Go to bed so you can get up early in the morning. Um, and within hiking distance, and Lori Bryan are having a conversation, but same at Mount Rainier during the summer. Um, and I miss whatever Lori said. Um, parking lot in Glacier was filled by 9 a.m. Yes, for uh, Logan's Pass. That is true. That is true. Um, so that's... That is, yeah, a good advice. Take a nap in the middle of the day, um, especially if you have your own vehicle and can get around. Now, um, the Glacier National Park, I think that I would get up, eat a quick breakfast, and then get on the shuttle and take the shuttles across Glacier National Park the next time we go. Now, driving going to the Sun Road was pretty epic in the truck. <laughs> it was pretty neat. But, uh, yeah, that that was uh, I would I would ride the shuttles the next time we go just simply because you don't have to worry about parking and you get to hike like the Highline Trail and you don't have to worry about what time you get there. 
Hello, the traveling Shintoist. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming today. Appreciate it so, so much. Um, and yeah, that is good. Um, so my next, my, my, well, the other, oh yeah, that's the other thing. So going early, that's the time you're going to see the most wildlife. And I have something to share with you today. Um, I told you at the beginning of the show that the National Park Service has been sharing things with people, with just in general on Facebook. And I, I felt like I needed to spread the message because, well, we're going, well, that's what we do. We spread the message for the national parks and they want you to share their posts, especially ones like these. So nps.gov has been putting out posts. So when you're going to see wildlife, make sure that you know what you're doing and don't get too close to them. Hello, Dr. Cliff, it is good to see you. Um, so wildlife petting chart, they're being funny. It says, national parks offer a unique experience for watching wildlife, okay? Uh, animals in parks are wild. Visitors have the wild, not domesticated, wild. They're not on leashes. They're not kept in barns. How more emphatic can I be about this? Got it? I feel very strongly about this. Visitors have the amazing opportunity to view animals as they live and interact with each other in their natural homes. But with that privilege comes responsibilities. Visitors are responsible for their own safety and the safety of the animals. This is a joke. It says, remember to keep your distance and enjoy your experience watching wildlife. No touching, no feeding, no harassing. Do I need to re repeat that? I don't think so. Hashtag keep wildlife wild. And then, so this is a bison and it says petting. Nope. How fast are you around its mouth? Vacation is over. Think again. Ouch. Um, no. And <laughs> do you have insurance? It's not a zoo, people. You are correct. You are correct. Yes. Yeah. No petting the sexy buffalo. You are correct, Dr. Cliff. <laughs> this, so I know it's funny, but you probably heard the news. People have been gored by bison and just, oh, the poor girl whose parents thought it was a good idea to go hiking along the trail near the bison and then got, uh, then got bucked by one, thrown into the trees. Poor thing. <sighs> keep your distance. If there's wildlife around, keep your distance. Don't go there. It's that hiking is not that important. Um, so that's one. The other one is people want to get their Instagram pictures. Um, I get it. I I love sharing our national parks on Instagram. I I was at a national park over the weekend, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed sharing those waterfall pictures. I've got more to share. I can't wait. I've got a bridge. I've got all sorts of things um, to, to share. Um, but you got to do it smart. You got to do it smart. Um, so the next one that I want to share with you is another one from the National Park Service. And so it says, keep safety in the picture. Location, location, location. Stick to the trails and boardwalks. That's the first one. Stick to the trails and boardwalks. Do you know that boardwalks are made for your safety? But not only your safety. They're made for the safety of the environment. You could be ruining the, the world. You could be ruining the world that, that someone else lives in. Hello, Kana's world. It's good to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, for every warning, there's someone that has made that mistake. Yes, you are correct. I agree. I agree. Um, keep your eyes on the trail and not on your camera while you're walking. So if you've ever watched one of my hiking videos through a national park, I do not have the camera up here. The camera is down here and held as close to my body as possible, one, to keep it steady, and two, that I can keep walking. <laughs> they don't clear the roots out from the trees. 
in Sequoia National Park so that you can walk. Um, they also don't clear out the squirrels. And people in the past have been very negligent and have fed squirrels and leave food or drop food. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they, the squirrels will run right underfoot. So keep your eyes on the trail. Stay on the safe side of barriers and safety railings. Oh, I'm sorry. What more do you have to say about that? Um, yes. Um, Triumph Scream Friending, hello. Yeah. I don't love those videos. It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. But I, I'm natural selection at work, I guess. I, I don't know. Anyway, I just trying to pass on the information so that people don't make these mistakes. Um, within hiking distance says, a ranger told me that it only takes 10 people to walk somewhere to completely destroy the vegetation. There you go. Do you want to have nice national parks? I used to look at my students and, you know, if they play a wrong note and jokingly, I'd look at them and I go, you are the reason we can't have nice things. Well, my kids knew it was a joke, but if, if, if you're the one who's off trail and not behind the safety barriers, you're, you're the reason we can't have nice things. Please don't be the reason we can't have nice things. Um, so the NPS.gov also says, take your time and, sh and share the view. Step to one side to avoid blocking the pathway for others when waiting to take a photo. Don't walk too close to the edge or walk backwards to get the perfect shot. Be careful around steep drop-offs drop and stay aware of your surroundings. All right. Then be patient and courteous towards other visitors who are taking a picture. This is hard. This is hard. And yes, I. Uh, it's so hard to be patient and wait for the family that wanted to take all of the all the pictures in front of Molten Barn right when the sun was perfect and the clouds were perfect in Grand Teton National Park. But Floral Jungle is correct. Manners cost nothing. Manners cost, cost nothing. That's awesome, Dee Dee. Um, unless you're at Tallgrass Prairie where they encourage going off trail to avoid the bison. Yes, there are. I mean, that's where it comes to a good a good reason to pay attention to the signage at the parks. Talk to a ranger when you get there. Go to the visitor center. That always should be your first stop. Hi, are there any trails that are closed? What should we not be doing? What should we be aware of on the trail today? Timey Lives, thank you for coming today. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, Dr. Cliff Riser says, wow, 10 people. It drives my wife crazy when people step on the coral that took decades to grow because they're not strong swimmers. Ah, makes sense. I missed something that Desmond Donder says. Um, this is why I'm not a fan of GoPro style cameras. Um, give me my long telephoto lens anytime. Please use your zoom lens. Um, the keep your distance from wildlife makes me happy. So follow park rules and regulations on how far you should stay away from the animals. Um, I think they've got pretty much a standard uh, across most national parks, but always check in with the, with the um, rangers, especially when you're in bear territory, because bear territory, like Yosemite, there's different rules for how you handle your cars and bears than there are in Yellowstone. So make sure you check in with the ranger and know what you're doing. If you want to take a picture of the animals, use a zoom lens on your camera, just like Desmond Stonders was saying. He takes some wonderful wildlife photos, uh, birds and uh, hummingbirds and, and lots of things like that. Um, make sure that you do that from a distance. If you're close enough to take a selfie, you are way in bold and drawn out too close. Don't get near those animals. Don't get near them. They, they're not for you. They're not for you. 
If you see an animal, you are responsible for backing up to a safe distance, even if the animal moves towards you. Um, this was really hard in um, for me and Matt in, sorry, wrong one, in Rocky Mountain National Park. We were sitting at our campsite and the, um, the elk walked into our campsite. Well, where do we go? We go and hide behind the truck and take pictures from there. Um, yeah, that's Desmond Sunder says. And Yogi and Boo Boo always talk to the rangers. So should you. I love it. I love it. Oh, bye, Justin and Christina. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, Life on the Trail says, yes, and trails and glacier are often closed due to grizzly activity. Check with the rangers. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and uh, Panic D says, I want a job making these graphics. Yeah, wouldn't that be epic? <laughs> they do such a good job. Um, Dr. Cliff says, and read the signboards if the rangers are not around. It will let you know local wildlife, like python warning. Yes, in Florida, that might be a thing. I hope it's not here. Um, yes. Um, Timey Liz says, that's their home. Don't be rude. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and yes, better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. All right. So the last thing, since we are Happy Trails Hiking, last sign that I wanted to share with you for the um, national parks, from the national parks, and I am running out of running out of time. So I want to make sure that I get to share that, but it's hiking etiquette. And I do want you to see that because um, lots of people don't know hiking etiquette. Um, and I just, I want to make sure that we do. So hiking etiquette in your national parks, know your right of way, check the signage for the trail you're hiking, follow the correct right of way yields. Generally hikers coming uphill are breathing heavily, but have the right of way. Um, if you're descending the trail, step aside, judge the hikers accordingly and give space to people climbing up. Two, stay on the trail. unless Don't step off the trail unless you absolutely must when yielding. Um, this includes impromptu dance-offs with fellow hikers. Going off the trail can damage and kill certain plants and animal species and can hurt the ecosystems around the trail. So so can bad dancing. Um, yes. Well, if you, uh, if you watched, uh, Susan's creatives music Monday, um, you would see, um, some awesomely good dancing by inspired John. Do not disturb the wildlife. I think we've probably made this point. Um, but they need their space and you need yours just like you with your ex. Keep a safe distance from any wildlife you encounter. Some parks require you to stay within certain distances of wildlife, so check the regulations before you visit. Um, take time to listen. When hiking in the great outdoors, let nature do the talking. We said be quiet. <laughs> Not only do you, will you bother, will other visitors appreciate the peace, but so will the wildlife. Why are you still talking? Many wildlife species re rely on natural sounds for communication and disrupting those sounds can hurt your chances of their chances of survival or at very least result in extreme eye rolls from the animals, um, <laughs> animals, the likes you haven't seen since. Well, earlier from your family, maybe. Um, and uh, yes, I, uh, I heard I heard that <laughs> Susan's. He told us, I was on my knees. It was funny. It was a great video. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, make yourself known. So as much as they want you to be quiet in bear country, you want to let those, uh, those bears know where you are. So as well as other hikers, when you encounter other hikers or trail users, offer a friendly hello or a simple head nod. Try not to be creepy about it. This helps Create a friendly atmosphere on the trail. If you approach another trail user be from behind, announce yourself in a friendly, calm tone and let them know that you want to pass. Yelling, bear and run. Not helpful. Don't do that. Um, and leave no trace. Always practice LNT principles. Leave rocks. Don't stack them. 
vegetation, and artifacts where you find them for others to enjoy. Do you stack rocks in your backyard? Also, the animals re should remain in the park. Um, one of those things that I I loved from um, Great Smoky Mountains National Park was they're having a problem with people stacking rocks. Well, salamanders live under those rocks, and it's important to to get those. Um, to, to leave them be. The salamanders live there and all sorts of things live there. That's, that's, you're disturbing the wildlife if you move the rocks. Leave them be. Don't do it. Read the signs. Never leave the trail or try to get a closer look at an animal because it can hurt the habitat and the animal and put you in danger. Oh, you need a sign? It's over there and there. And there's one. Did you see that one? I like it. And then be aware of your surroundings. Always be aware of your surroundings when hiking in national parks. It will help you and the many members of your group and any members of your group. It will help keep wildlife and their habitats safe and healthy. You're not lost. You're still in the parking lot. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you. Um, yeah, uh, from our national parks. My other travel tips will have to wait for another day. I have had a great, a great time sharing this with you today. If you found this information helpful, please come back and leave a comment here. It does help YouTube know that this information was good information. Um, also, please share it with someone else who's like-minded. I've shared it on Facebook a bunch today with a bunch of different groups, and I'm hoping that they will leave me comments for things that I've forgotten. Um, but yes, please leave a comment down below and share this with other people. I think that I, um, yeah, I think it's good information. Please share out information that the National Park Service shares on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It's it's good for people to be out in our parks. I love that you enjoy them. I love that you enjoy them. I want you to do it safely for you and for the park. And I hope that you go out and have a great day. Go out and live the life that you love. And remember, you are not replaceable. Thank you, everyone.